Since the snapshots for 1.21.5, we can add name dependent item models. So this here, I call it the Statue of Undying. It's just a regular old Totem of Undying. Well, it's my resource pack, so it has a custom model. But it's a Totem of Undying and you rename it to a Statue of Undying and its model will change. You can do this for all items. This one obviously designed to be put in item frame and then it looks like a cool statue. You can rotate it, but I guess you shouldn't. Uh, you can though. And, uh, and yeah, that's what this video is. It's showing you how to make name dependent item variants through Mojang's new item state system. Now, item states are a new type of file that Vanilla Minecraft recognizes that pack makers can use to make component dependent item models, which is pretty exciting. And that's also what named variants are. Uh, there's a new folder in the resource pack. It's called items. It's not called item stage. I just call it that because this is basically block states for items, right? Anyways, in this items folder are uh, files for all the items in the game. And most of them are pretty simple. Even the Acacia boat. It just tells the game what type of model to make it. And the type of model is just a model. And then the model's location uh, is, is this. So it's all pretty straightforward. You're going to have to know how to make models and all that stuff but this is already very similar to block states but then instead for items obviously and these labels here like the the, the type being model uh, we can change this to a bunch of different things and the main way to do this and how i even figured out how to do it is by using this site you can even load up the default item states here in presets right we'll just pull up the acacia boat actually and then compare it to the raw code that is the item state in vanilla minecraft and you can see that on the site uh, it's a drop down menu for the type right so the type model uh, can be many different things most of the time you'll just use model it's just a simple reference you know this this item Item, uses a model and that's it right and then it has the path of the model or you choose a composite and with a composite type you can select multiple models right if we have the type now simply be model right nothing fancy but we can even combine the built-in generated model with something else whatever we want but this video is about the name variance so instead of model we do condition the property should be has component then the component is custom name we'll find it down here refresh this so it works and then under on true here as type we do select the property should be component and then the component Component is again a custom name. Here it is. Now we can start adding cases. So uh, I, I have a name, for example, Mickey Joe's sword, right? And then this model can have its own type. So if you just want a simple model that you have in your resource pack somewhere, we'll just do netherite sword. And you can also make new folders. So I'll make a folder in the items folder called netherite sword. And in there, I'll have a JSON file that is a model called Mickey Joe's sword. All right. You can see on the bottom right here on the side, this area updates automatically as we progress. And this is also the raw code that you're going to want to copy uh, when we're done and put in the JSON file that is the item states for the item that you're changing a few more things to do uh add a fallback and the fallback should just be the default model it's it's what it reverts to if it doesn't use the property so since this is a netherite sword uh it should just be a netherite sword right and because this is an on true statement there's also an on false statement so it needs the netherite sword reference again for some reason it's twice you need it twice all right two two times the default uh, model and then uh, one time your crystal model and that's it already if we were to copy this it would work perfectly i find the easiest way to implement the item states is to just reference the default item state so you also know uh, what the name should be perfectly so we have the netherite sword here i'm just going to copy it uh, put it in the item states folder in my pack and then when i open it uh, it should look exactly like the default item states model obviously and then i can copy and paste uh, the code that i just made on this site uh, into this json file it's completely replace it and if i save it it should already work it'll break all my other netherite sword renames but did the bar just go back i've never seen the bar go back i guess we are regressing here anyways uh, you can see if we rename a netherite sword now to uh, mickey joe's sword uh, it's gonna work it's a, a quick little texture that i made uh, for uh, mickey joe's sword and that's about the gist of it of how to add named variants uh, for items you can do a, a lot of stuff here for example if we look at the default item state for the trident uh, we can see that mojang has done some pretty interesting stuff here the, the model type is uh, select and then the property of it is at the bottom for some reason but you can see this is actually you can follow this line here if you use this program ramp so you can see it is actually part of, uh, of of this model so the property is display context actually i'll just show it off here in the in this site okay well this is going <laughs> that's actually a lot easier okay so load it up and you can see that the property is display context and then uh, the cases is uh, when this model is in the gui on the ground or fixed uh, it's going to use a different model uh, than it would otherwise and then because it is a trident it also has a different condition for when it's using it either way this teaches us that it's possible so we can try to copy this uh, in our own file. So instead of having Mickey Joe's sword simply be a model, we'll change its type to select its property to display context. And then we add some cases and then we can just pick anything. So we'll do, uh, uh, I don't know, third person, right hand, whatever. It doesn't matter. And then this type, we'll just have it be a model. And I don't actually have a model for this. I'm going to imagine that in my netherite sword folder, uh, I also have a, a sword called, uh, I don't know, Mickey Joe's sword and then a third person, right hand. Okay, it's it's completely irrelevant. It's just to, to showcase that it's possible, right? So this item, I mean, okay, we have to 
add another fallback. So that's the model. It'll default to when it is using the name, but when it is not held in uh, the third person right hand or whatever you have picked here. You can also pick a list. That's how Mojang has it formatted for the Trident anyways. You can just have multiple things, but we're just going to do an enum. That's one thing. And then this is my model. Uh, we already set the fallback and it looks good. We're just going to copy all the code, place the code in our netherite sword item states, and we're going to see uh, it work already. And I, I, like I said, I don't have a model for it, so it's going to be a broken texture, but you get the point. I have it in our right hand third person. There you go. See, it changes. So custom models possible with items as well. So showcasing how you can have nested properties. And you can do this with a lot of stuff. I also have a soul set rename in my pack. And if you enchant it with fire aspect, the, the flame changes from soul colored to orange flame right because when you hit a mob with fire aspect it's an orange flame it's not a soul flame so just a nice little consistent thing that i can do in vanilla as well by having nested properties you should check out my pack my resource pack barely default can also be an example of stuff that's possible right you can download it see what what sort of stuff that i've done put my item states into the website right so you can just easily edit it that way you could also do that little fun tip i could leave you with is uh, if you find yourself kind of constricted uh, by the default uh, texture size for generated items because obviously the model that i have for mickey joe's sword is just a the parent of the item handheld model which is a parent of the built-in generated model it just has a custom texture but you might want to make a little bit of a bigger sword so what you can do is actually make the texture bigger make sure you always increase your textures by a factor of two so either 32 by 32 or 64 by 64 128 by 128 you get it it'll look like this pixel your bigger sword however you want it and then save it and then as expected minecraft doesn't know how to handle an hd texture it doesn't make it bigger right it's the same model so you just have a kind of kind of a too thick uh, kind of a tiny pixel inconsistent sword right now so what we can do with blockbench if we go to the uh, models folder and i like i said you can also have folders so i have a folder in the item folder uh, that's that's a netherite sword folder for all my netherite sword variants right and if we go to mickey joe's sword like i said it's just a parent of the item handheld model you can actually just drag it into blockbench uh, and blockbench knows how to how to open this file and as you can see just like in minecraft it's it's too small and too thick at the same time but you can easily fix this by adding display settings uh, in blockbench right there's even presets if you want to like you look default weapon and then we just need to double of this i mean i don't know what the, i'm bad at math dude okay look this look it looks normal now we can just uh, t tweak it like that uh, and that's how you do it that's how you have a, a bigger sword in case you i don't know just thought that could be nice right a little nice extra part of the tutorial uh, if you want to have bigger swords using the uh, built-in generated uh, item model just double the size of the model uh, on these two axes everywhere right and it'll balance out maybe for the gui you have to give it a little bit of a custom size okay you can figure this out you get it so we learned how to manipulate the built-in generated model as well so you can make bigger named sword variants and i guess that's everything that i had to show off i mean if you want more renames you can just add more cases right if that's if that wasn't obvious you right you just add another case look we can have a cyclops sword for example do anything you want there's a lot of cool stuff to do you could even have swords dependent on the time of day if you look at the clock uh, item state the clock is now managed simply with item states right it's not like there's a built-in clock mechanic for item every item basically could be a clock theoretically right if you simply have type select property context dimension uh, and then you can just already uh, select which dimension you want it to appear in so if it's in the overworld if it works basically uh, you know these are all the uh, the textures that it has right so the clock state uh, zero 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 one uh, etc etc proof of any item being able to have this feature is my moon dagger look if we make it night the moon dagger looks like netherite right now and then if we uh, make it nighttime with the time set uh, midnight uh, it's gonna change to to be to be light like the colors of the moon, you see that? And normally it's gradual as well, right? So it works exactly the same as a clock, effectively. So I hope this helped. I hope you can now um, do some cool stuff with your resource pack. Uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, it helps out a lot. Download my resource pack, you can reference it, copy the code, any working stuff, you know, whatever. And I'll tell your friends about my channel, I don't know, whatever, the video's done. Check out the Better Leaf Data Pack that I do with Cyclops. Now I guess if you're really a fan of my pack, you can become a YouTube channel member. I guess that's it. Thanks for watching, bye-bye.